What is up everybody, it is Zog here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be going over how to properly Kona Cold Kite as a mage. This is something that a lot of people have been asking for recently because they're, you know, having difficulties with the AoE farms using Kona Cold and things like that, where mobs are hitting them, but their Kona Cold is not hitting certain mobs, and so I try to go through everything I can with the Kona Cold strategy. Ultimately, it comes down to practice. So practice makes perfect with this. Learning your leeways and things like that as I'll go over is what's going to really get it down. So just get out there and practice with some mobs. But hopefully these will give you some tips and tricks that you guys can use to go through and get through some of those initial humps that you would have had to deal with. Now how we're going to do this is I'm going to really dive into ZF first and I'm going to go through pretty much everything for the AoE kiting just in general just because there's a good amount of zombies you know there's no casters and things like that so it's a good group to kind of demonstrate with then we're going to jump in to a Mara elemental pool as well where we're handling about 100 mobs and handling what happens when some resist and also if a, if you just completely miss your Kona cold what to do in that situation and then we're going to jump into a ZG farm where it's just one group, but they resist me a ton of times. It was absolutely <laughs> wild how much they resisted me and how you can kind of handle that. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll have a better idea of how to use Kona Cold and Kona Cold kiting in your strategies. Let's jump into it. If you guys are enjoying this content, please uh, check out the Twitch link down below to see it live and also hit that subscribe button. Okay, so I figured a good place to start would be ZF just because it's kind of like the namesake of all the mages and Kona Cold farming and everything like that and start off the expansion or i guess what would be the opposite of the expansion just classic whatever so we're going to start here i'm only going to use rank one kona cold to kill these mobs just so it can take a while just so i can kind of explain everything but the first thing that i want to touch on is leeway so leeway is a very very important mechanic to any kiting especially kona cold kiting so the way that leeway works is a leeway when two mobs are moving so if a mob is moving and you're moving the distance with which abilities from either character or mob can hit is extended. Now the amount that it's extended by is based on the size of your character. That's why Torrens, for example, have a, like a larger hitbox, for example, so they have more leeway to hit versus gnomes who have a smaller leeway and things like that. But it's especially important when you're coming out of the Nova. So for example, a lot of people, what they do is they either get really close and then they run away and they get hit. Right? So we just got hit three times because we were too close to the mobs. Some people, however, stand too far away, and so then they don't get hit. Or while they're going around in a circle like this, they're standing you know, a million yards away, and then they miss half the mobs with Kona Cold. That is leeway. So what I recommend you do so that you can kind of just get used to the leeway of your race is just grab like five mobs and just kite them around for a while. They don't have to be a high level. Just use rank one Kona Cold and just kite them around for a while. Get used to the leeway with which the mobs can hit you. One easy way to do that is to jump around like this, like we're doing right now, and see which mobs at which distance don't get hit. So for example, that troll right there, that zombie, was in the back, and so he didn't get hit by Arcona Cold because he was so far back that Leeway wasn't able to hit him, even with the Leeway. However, some of the other mobs that were pretty close to him did get hit. All right, so now let's focus on how we are going to come out of a Frost Nova. So there's multiple different ways to come out of a Frost Nova with a Kona Cold, and there's a lot of different strategies that people use. We're going to start off with the back to pedal, because a lot of people like to back pedal. So why do we use back pedal as one of the strategies? Well, it actually activates leeway. However, leeway is also, as you see me back pedaling here, leeway is also based on movement speed. So if you are flying at like 800%, you can your leeway is larger than it would be if you were just backpedaling. So backpedaling only activates half leeway because you're moving at half your normal speed backwards, right? So if I was to Kona Cold and then backpedal out, they don't hit me because although leeway is activated, I'm good to go to go away from there. The negative aspect of that is that your abilities aren't going to hit from as far if you are backpedaling. I personally never use backpedal. So to do that, I had to use the arrow keys. Instead, what I will do whenever I come out of a Nova is I will actually face best practices i don't do it all the time the best practice would be i would face my camera away from the mobs still facing them rank one kona cold and then click both my left and my mouse button which will cause me to move in that direction so i'm going to get them together again and we're going to go for the nova i'm just going to kona cold so all of them are a cold snap okay so i turn my camera around so now i'm facing this way right 
And then what I do is I rank one Kona cold and I hold both my left and my mount right mouse button and run away from the mobs. And then I can go into my normal kite in a strafe circle kind of fashion. How am I kiting right now? What I'm all I'm doing is holding strafe and my right mouse button to change the direction that I'm facing. So a lot of people will do it by keyboard turning or will just use strafe and things like that. What I would highly, highly recommend is to keybind strafe to something. For me, it's Q and E and W is to move forward and then hold your right mouse button. That is going to allow you to constantly update the direction with which you're moving while at the same time being able to move away for cutting purposes. If you ever have mobs that you miss the cone of cold with, what you can do is you can blink to the opposite side as we did there, and then the mobs will get into the rest of the stack of the group. Alternatively, if it's just one mob, don't even worry about it. Just let it hit you and just let it get slowed from there. The third way that people come out of a Nova, and I don't really recommend this way, is that they come out strafing. And by that, what I mean is, is this. They're facing the mobs and they come out strafing. Sometimes that's going to work, but unfortunately, sometimes you're also not really getting away from the mobs. So the nice thing about our cone of cold when we run away is that we are running the furthest possible distance away. These mobs are slowed right here, and I am running the furthest possible distance away that way, right? But if we just strafe, we're maintaining kind of the same distance from them, and so leeway could potentially hit us. So, in the opener, three options. Number one, backpedal. Backpedal and then go into a circular motion. Number two, turn your camera around and then left click and right click immediately following the Kona cold. So the way to do that is you go into interface options, you go to camera, and you make sure that camera falling style is set to never. If it's set to smart, what's gonna happen is that if I'm if I move, it automatically adjusts for me. Or if it's set to always, then I can't even turn it around. It automatically turns around. So make sure that your camera is set to never. And that's very helpful too, just when you can, you know, kind of keep running forward and look behind you to see where the mobs are and things like that. I would always recommend having it facing like that. And then the third option is to strafe out of the slow. That is an option. Wouldn't really recommend doing that. Then how to actually do the Kona cold is you hold strafe and you hold your right mouse button. And you just let the right mouse button, it'll take a little bit of practice, but you let the right mouse button guide you in a big circle. And you just get used to running in that perfect circle. If you want, this could actually be a good spot because what you could do is you could use some of the graves as kind of like landmarks to make sure that you're doing a correct circle, right? Because you can see where you're landing on the grave every time. And if you're not landing on the same spot or close to the same spot of the grave every time, then your circle is probably not that good of a circle. And also if you're doing like a real short circle, eventually obviously the mobs are gonna hit you. So you wanna you want to maintain the same distance from those mobs every single time. To practice, I recommend just picking up five mobs or so. Don't pick up, you know, 20, maybe even just these two, for example. So if we wanna practice, pick up these two mobs, go ahead and over them and then practice everything because they probably won't resist. I mean, they only have a 1% chance to resist, but they're gonna have the same exact kind of leeway range. And so you can go ahead and you can practice, you know, your circular kiting. Right? You can practice holding strafe and you can practice holding your right mouse button and kite around in a circle. Now, the hardest thing that people have to grasp is the positioning of the Kona cold. So a lot of people ask me all the time, you know, I see you do a jump turn Kona cold, for example, and your Kona cold lands in front of you, but it hits the mobs. So for example, if I'm running away like this, kiting these mobs, right? And I go for a jump turn Kona cold, and I spin around, it still hit the mob. And how did it do that? Whenever you hit Kona Cold, it captures where your current screen is. So for example, Kona Cold still going on over here, but my screen when I hit Kona Cold was facing towards those mobs. This is another big benefit of using the right mouse button. I use the right mouse button to place where I want the Kona Cold to go, and I know it's gonna go in an arc of that direction, and then I let it fly. Same kind of thing when I'm running away doing the kiting strategy. I'm going to jump, turn, Kona cold, and then turn back around. Give it half a second before you Kona cold because what you can potentially do is you could potentially go like this. And you could turn around real quick and then try to get it off. And I still hit because I'm 
programmed by this point to try to make sure that it hit. But sometimes you kind of cold too quick and you actually don't hit the mumps. So you want to make sure that you're being smart with exactly when to kind of cold. But when you're kiting around in a circle, even though it looks like the Kona Cold's going to the right, that's just because I'm strafing. But my camera is still facing towards the mobs. So for example, if I'm going to change directions here, I am running left, but my camera's still facing them. Kona Cold goes over there. The mobs get hit, though. That is how you can properly place your Kona Cold. So if you have a bunch of mobs, what you want to do is you want to kite around in a circle, focus on the circle. When Kona Cold gets low, which is always going to be right when your Kona Cold's coming up, that's when you want to face towards the mobs, do Kona Cold, right back to the circle. Face towards the mobs, do Kona Cold, right back to the circle. That right there was the way I couldn't hit the mobs. So if I'm running in a circle, face towards the mobs, back, except a lot faster. The last thing that we have to work on is how to position the mobs so that they can move towards each other. So sometimes you're going to have a one mob be over here and one mob be right here and imagine that this is the two sides of the group that you're working with this mob is going to take a different path to me than this mob is the way to get them to stack together is to draw a triangle with them and move away from that from them towards that triangle and then stop every once in a while when you stop moving, what happens is that they kind of recalculate their direction. So you can see a shift. So watch, they run in the same direction, and then I will stop, and then they'll kind of they'll kind of shift their exact direction that they're running towards me with. So they're constantly trying to recalculate the way to go. And so if you occasionally stop, it recalculates a little bit. And then also you want to make sure that you're going towards a triangle kind of motion so that they're constantly getting closer and closer towards the direction that you're running. But ultimately, once you practice that, once you figure out the way to open, you're going to be good to go. So we're going to have a couple examples of me doing some common farms and doing my AOE strat and what exactly I do in those farms and those situations. And I'll talk through them to hopefully guide you along. But definitely let me know if you have questions on anything that we talked about down in the comments down below. Okay, so the first thing I want to show an example of is the Mara Ellie farm. And so this is the 54 to 57 kind of leveling strategy that we have on our channel that you can take a look at but the main idea is that there's a lot of mobs that were stacking up here so i want to show and handle a lot of mobs so as you can see here a few resisted so when you have as many mobs as you do here a good idea is just to use cold snap and go for another nova that way you can at least keep the mobs controlled for your shatter combo so shatter combo is flame strike kona cold and when you're dealing with non-elites that's going to be basically all that you need to do to take out a lot of these mobs so here we prep up for the flame strike kona cold we get that off and then we immediately get out of there obviously as you can see some of the mobs didn't get hit so i use blink so this is what i'm talking about using blink so i use blink to kind of reposition the mobs and i get hit a couple times from them but then i have kona cold back up to be able to get a kona cold going again so this is sloppy but this is how you can recover from the situation then as soon as as Nova's back up, we're good to go, and then we can go right back into our normal kiting. And you can see here that I'm just going to run away as soon as I do the Kona Cold, and then I strafe back and forth, left and right, constantly creating a new triangle so that these Guardians kind of stack up. And so now they're perfectly stacked, but just a few seconds ago, they were in two separate groups. But by going back and forth, you're constantly having them move closer and closer. Here we have the new mobs that spawn. And we just go for Flame Strike Kona Cold and take them out with Arcane Explosions. But that shows you, shows you guys how to kind of recover from a not so great situation. You use left and right strafing as well as positioning your Kona Cold. And it's okay to let mobs hit you. But if you have a lot that you miss with the Kona Cold, you're going to need to use Blink or Cold Snap to get to the other side. It's also great to be an engineer so that you can go ahead and stun them if you do need to. This clip was from ZG and it was only one pack but this pack resisted me a crazy amount. And there's another thing that I want to focus on with ZG. ZG has a uniqueness to it that it has a lot of different terrain levels. But we can see here that this first croc resisted us. So instead of going for a flame strike Kona Cold pattern, I'm kiting him around in a circle. I'm treating him just like I would the rest. But you see how three of the crocs didn't get slowed? That is because of terrain. One way to kind of get around terrain is to try to jump or to try to keep them on... <laughs> just a level area. So I should be killing them down here, but because I'm killing them up here, the terrain is off, which is allowing or 
preventing my cone of cold rather from hitting the mobs that are down a little bit down the path. So if you're lower and they're higher, you can use jump. That can really help to kind of hit the extra mobs. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. So we had to recover just by kiting the mobs around a little bit. Here we get another resist. We finally get a good Nova so we can go for a flame strike cone of cold pattern. But I decide to end up just going for pretty much just cone of colds the entire time just so I can kite them around and show you guys. But here you can see that they're not perfectly stacked. So I'm going to start kind of running away from them and making them, you know, kind of go into these V shapes where they're constantly getting closer and closer. Every single time because of the terrain, when I go for my Kona Colds, I am jumping. It's not something that you need to do, but especially in ZG with the terrain, it can help. Just get the Kona Cold bigger. I have a clip of me getting punted once where my Kona Cold was just massive because I was flying through the air. And then with leeway, it just grew to be a huge Kona Cold. It was insane. That kind of idea is the same thing here where they might be a little bit higher. And so a jump with a cone of cold is going to cause the cone of cold to be a little bit larger than it was previously hitting more mobs. So it could help. But we cut around in the circle here, dealing with the resists. Now, obviously, we get a ton of resists, but you can see even with the amount that we get, they still I mean, they don't hit you for a ton. They're hitting me for about 350. You just need to be able to swap directions and make sure that as soon as they get slowed by your ice armor, you're taking advantage of that and not letting them hit you again. So here this croc got slowed by ice armor, so now I'm just focusing on getting him stacked back into the group by going around in a circle and taking short little pauses everywhere. Again, another one resisted, so I'm kiting around in a circle. This is actually insane. So as far as resistances go, if you guys are curious, you can never get better than a 99% chance to hit. However, if you have elemental precision, any mob 60 or below, you're going to have a 99% chance to get the hit on them. So you're going to be fine. These mobs, what that means is that I have a 99% chance to hit, <laughs> but they resisted a ton. So it was pretty wild, um, but it's kind of how you can handle it. And so you don't need to freak out if one, you know, resists these crocs, however, do have a slow. So that is something you need to be concerned about. And if you ever get slowed with tendon rip, I think it's called, you probably need to block that off. But outside of that, it's okay if a mob hits you. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live. And also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.